Hello again, Awesomers. It's me. It's your old buddy, Steve Simonson, and I'm coming back with another episode of the Awesomers.com podcast. And uh, this is episode number 165. So good. Uh, if you've been keeping score at home, just write down 165 for your diary. Uh, dear diary, Steve recorded another podcast. What a surprise. Uh, but it's here. It's happening right now. Now, uh, for the uninitiated, as I like to say, just go to Awesomers.com slash 165 to see today's show notes and details. Now today, I just want to have a quick conversation about the recent so-called phase one uh, trade deal between the United States and China. Now, this was uh, recent news in early December. Uh, technically, it was right before, I think it was December 13th of 2019, right before uh, another round of tariffs were set to take effect on the last $160 billion of Chinese imports that were coming from the United States to China. Now, this was set to take uh, effect on December 15th, 2019, and this would actually cover mostly consumer products, and I'm talking about cell phones, video game consoles, computer monitors, TVs, all that kind of stuff, which would, uh, it was already set to December uh, to try to make sure it didn't impact 2019 Christmas. So that was a, a strategic move uh, on the part of the administration. And then they use that as kind of like a, um, I don't know, a hammer, uh, at least a, a threat of, of the final amount of uh, import tariffs to happen and to, to stimulate China's involvement. And just to be clear, around $500 billion a year, a little more than that, comes from the United States to China. And uh, presently, there are $370 billion of that that have tariffs on it. So this was the last bit, and, and again, it goes a little bit above uh, 500 billion. And uh, so there's a lot at stake here, and, and we'll talk about the effect of the existing tariffs here in a minute. So the point is, this you know, kind of was a, a big drop dead date, December 15th, and there's been a lot of news, and interestingly enough, not a lot of tweets. And this is how we do our foreign policy, apparently, much to my chagrin, that when you, when you don't see Trump tweeting too much like, uh, uh, insulting things or things that are kind of nonsense, that's probably a good sign that there's maybe a deal to be had. And many of the tweets that he did make, uh, although I think in terms of volume, were lower than his normal uh, diarrhea of the, the Twitter uh, account. But the, the things that he did tweet were generally constructive. They're like, you know, uh, we're very close to a deal. China really wants a deal. I'll decide if I want a deal. He did send one little uh, shot across the bow of, you know, hey, maybe we'll just wait till after the election, um, trying to posture that he's in the driver's seat. Now, whether that's true or not, however you believe about the politics of the election, that's just what he's doing. Uh, this is uh, an observation, not a judgment. So uh, that said, just before this uh, last set of tariffs were set to take effect, the U.S. and China uh, jointly announced, hey, we're going to make a phase one trade deal, and here's what that looks like. Uh, we are going to um, basically do away with, um, uh, discontinue the thought of adding tariffs on this last $160 billion. And uh, there's, a, I call it round two, but there's a group of consumer China-made products that took effect uh, on September 1st that went from, is going down from 15%, the current tariff, down to 7.5%. So that's a rollback of existing tariffs on part of the, the swath of products that are included, but only halfway, so, right? So that might be considered a compromise. And then there's a third group um, of tariffs on another, let's call it $200 billion worth of products, roughly, that still have a 25% tariff on them. So just... You know, if you just read the headlines and just scan, and it's like, oh, a phase one tar tariff deal. It's like, oh, good, it's all gone. It's not all gone. Uh, it's still happening, but it's better. And the ratcheting down of the rhetoric continues, which is good for us. So just to recap, the, there were basically three rounds of tariffs that were announced. The very first round, and that started at 15 and went to 25, and that's still there. So that's still happening. Then there was the recent round, uh, September 1st, 2019, that was initially in, um, brought out at 15%. That's been cut down to 7.5% as a result of the phase one trade deal. And then, of course, they've done away with the final round that they were threatening. So that's on the U.S. imposed side. So what does the U.S. get for those compromises? And uh, 
basically China said, hey, we're going to buy uh, more U.S. goods, particularly from farmers, immediately. And the benefit to the U.S. farm uh, and agriculture industry should be pretty significant. They say uh, potentially up to $200 billion worth of goods over the course of uh, the next few years. That could be good. And this actually could also help China. Uh, China has a massive problem with their pork supply. I won't get into the whole thing, but there's African swine flu that's decimated at least 50% of their pork population. I know this may not sound like it's important to Amazon sellers, but all of these factors actually weigh into how tough this uh, tariff uh, war is going to be. It's, it's not about the uh, price of pork so much as it is about all the variables in play. Uh, and there's a plethora of them. Now, uh, China did ratchet down some of their purchases during uh, all of this tariff uh, um, talk. And, and so this is probably a good um, indicator that that will go back to uh, not just the previous levels, but higher levels. And that's certainly been the deal that uh, is at least postulated. <laughs> Excuse me. So whether or not China is right about this um, in, in terms of the compromise, uh, with their own party, we'll see. Uh, there's internal pressure for them to get a deal, and I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. So there, there was additional parts of the phase one deal, which is that some intellectual property uh, provisions were put into there. And this is, this is interesting. So th they basically have 86 pages of intellectual property kind of um, agreement, which talks about what is intellectual property uh, offenses and how will they be um, policed, I suppose. And this is, this is interesting because, you know, you've got a lot of um, issues and with intellectual trade property, for example, China has been accused of just blatantly ripping off intellectual property. And the United States, which is a holder of a lot of intellectual property, then doesn't like to see its intellectual property used. And then China factories or, uh, technology companies use it to then go sell against the American companies who invented it. That's the, the, that's the broad strokes of the uh, accusations. And by the way, that's not unique to the United States. This uh, sort of uh, accusation and even pattern of behavior exists worldwide, whether it's the EU, uh, Australia, uh, even other parts of Asia. This is a kind of a common way of doing business in China. And so part of the phase one trade deal was to uh, put some sort of barriers around that intellectual property rampant um, uh, theft. And so this is just the beginning. This, they call it the phase one deal because China would like all of those tariffs to disappear. And for those, you know, I see a lot of the Facebook comments and posts and it's like, oh, tariffs this, tariffs that. I can just tell you firsthand that uh, the factories in China are definitely heavily impacted if they're in those tariff groups. And all of those shenanigans that you see people talking about on Facebook. Oh, I just, uh, I have my Chinese supplier ship it from, you know, Shenzhen to Vietnam and then just put made in Vietnam on it and ship it over to the U.S. Like they figured out some secret that nobody else could have ever come up with. Well, first of all, that's a crime. Uh, so don't do it. And second of all, that's been going on since the dawn of time, since there were tariffs and this, I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of years. So it's not going to last. And there was actually a large, a wholesale company my buddy Patrick Mayoho told me about. Uh, they sell nails, essentially, it's a big uh, company, and they were just trans-shipping. That's what that practice is called, or submarine U-boat uh, shipping, uh, where they just ship it from China to Vietnam, and then they ship, you know, I think they got 40 containers detained and seized or whatever, uh, at least at issue, that they were allegedly faking the stuff being made in Vietnam and shipping it from China. So don't do that. And just because you have that idea to kind of hack the system doesn't mean it's a good idea. The other, uh, I, I think, scallywag kind of move is where people just fake the HS code. They're like, oh, you know what? This is close enough. This is a different HS code. Just switch to this, and then you don't have the, uh, maybe you have lower duties even, the, the inherent uh, duties, and, and it eliminates the tariff. You, you cannot just switch HS codes. It needs to be the exact right HS code. And if you're in doubt, get a determination from the Customs uh, Department of the United States. And by the way, that's pretty universal. This uh, applies to really any country you're importing into. So uh, phase one tariff deal in summary, pretty good deal um, because it ratchets down some of the rhetoric. 
the uncertainty remains, but the pace and the volume of the supposed trade war is lower, and that's a good sign. And the fact that there is some rolling back of some of the existing tariffs, again, good sign. And it makes it less impactful. Now, although there's been a lot of news about all of this stuff, you hear Trump tariffs, you hear trade war, you hear all this stuff for the last 18, maybe even 20 months. I don't think that the most average consumers have felt the impact. And by the way, this doesn't just impact the United States. This impacts other countries as well. Because if uh, the products are you know, kind of harder to get or the prices go up or there's any supply chain shifts uh, or destruction, that could either present opportunity or threat to buyers from around the world. So in some cases, it, you may be getting a better deal because you don't have that issue. In other cases, it's worse for you. And I, that particularly is uh, true about components, right? So if, if you need a product made um, in Australia, but it has Chinese-based components and it passes a certain threshold of components or uh, the amount of it, that may be subject to tariffs or steel tariffs or other things by America. So this can impact the world in very weird and nebulous ways. Uh, the point is tariffs are happening whether we like them or not. Uh, the phase one trade deal is a good thing, I think, uh, because it ratchets down that uh, pain. And it gives us a path, maybe even a glide path, to kind of put this thing to bed. And hopefully there will be some productive uh, issues. I personally support more trade balance between countries. Uh, I know there, you know, people argue against me and go, oh, it's never been a problem. I think it is a problem. I think long term, it's especially going to be a problem. And I just, I think it's fair. It's like, hey, I'll buy 100 billion from you, you buy 100 billion from me, and then both sides are trading value. Instead of me buying 100 billion from you and you buying 1 billion from me, and you get end up having all the value, my economy then has to make all of that value up somewhere. And it's, it's I think, harder and harder to do. And the, the transfer of wealth is creating, uh, I would say, economic aggression in different parts of the world. But that's, that's a topic for another day. So good news, phase one trade deal, a positive step, eliminated most of the painful tariffs that were pending uh, for kind of all the rest of the uh, categories of products. Does this mean you shouldn't look outside of China? I think you should be a global, generally agnostic sourcing person. If you find a good deal in China, but you can find a similar deal elsewhere, why not compare them against each other? Look at the pros and cons. Do what we call a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Figure out where your best deal is. Maybe you have a, a pitch to go, you know what? I can switch to uh, whether it's India or Vietnam or uh, South America somewhere, right? You know, you could say, well, I could just, I, I'll make this thing from cotton uh, out of Honduras or Colombia. And now I've got a kind of a uh, organic story that I didn't have in China. That could be, and, and if the prices are similar, why not, right? There's more than just how do I buy at the cheapest price? You've got to think about how to add value in. And that means thinking globally and thinking creatively about differentiation. So uh, this is overall good news, in my opinion. Uh, I'm certainly open to being wrong, as always. Uh, my uh, axiom one is I don't know nothing about nothing. So if you disagree with me, go ahead and uh, let me know. You can go to the awesomers.com podcast or the Awesomers Professional Sellers Group, uh, uh, Amazon Sellers Group on Facebook. Just let us know. And don't forget to subscribe, share, uh, leave a review, et cetera. So again, a little wrap up for you. Trade deal, phase one, good. Uh, hopefully we'll see more along this line. And because China is under duress, we talk to their factories, we see the drop in exports uh, of 23% in October. That's significant news. And I think China's uh, ready, to, ready to get a deal done. Uh, see if I can stutter my way through the rest of this. Anyway, awesomers.com slash 165. That's the show notes page. I may have some details or links on there from some relevant articles that talk about this uh, topic. And uh, as always, I thank you guys, and I wish you the very best sales and day. Bye-bye, everybody.